Good morning. Coming to you today for our Easter Sunday morning service. Uh, again, it's very strange not to have you here. In fact, this is the first Sunday of my whole life in about 60 years that I've been on Easter Sunday without having anybody in church. It's kind of a preacher's nightmare to come to Easter Sunday service and nobody show up. And here we are. <laughs> but we're so glad that you're here to watch us online. I'm so grateful for so many of you who have shared the, the message from last week. We were able to, to reach a whole lot more folks that way. And we're very grateful for that. We've gained a lot of new uh, folks to our page. And thank you so much for sharing this message. Today I want to bring to you a message called the Instructions after the resurrection. And I'll be reading to you from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 7. Before we get there, though, I would like to say a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that you loved us first, and that you gave us your own son, Jesus, and that he died in our place. So grateful, Father God, that not only did he die for us, but he rose again. And he's ever making intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. Thank you so much, mighty God, for your provision for us. And I come to you now, Lord, and I ask for your help. I ask for the anointing of your Holy Spirit upon the preaching of your word. I ask, Father God, that somehow, Lord God, you can take these simple words, Lord God, and that you can bring them to the ears of those who need to hear it. Father God, I pray that it makes sense. I pray, Father God, that there would be understanding, Lord God, and that your Holy Spirit would draw them to hear the message today. I thank you for it. I put my trust in you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Easter Sunday is a very important day for us. It is the day that we celebrate because he's alive, and he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity to worship a risen Savior. The tomb is empty, and he's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. He'll never come again as a suffering servant. The next time he comes, he's coming as the reigning King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And we're looking forward to that day. Today, we're facing a lot of crazy things. This pandemic has gotten everybody in an uproar. Uh, there, there's a lot of things going on in the media that perhaps we shouldn't be listening to. But there's a lot of truth in what's being said also because it's a very scary thing. And if you've been watching the numbers as I've been watching, you have to realize that these are not just numbers that we're seeing, but these are actually lives that are being disrupted. These are lives who have, who have, who have been lost, souls who have been lost for eternity. And there are so many who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ today. And so I hope that today I might be able to give you some hope and and a word of, of God's peace to your life in Jesus' name. Uh, I, I want to bring this message as I was reading this passage of Scripture. Uh, it's a very clear outline that, that we're given here. And the instructions are not instructions from the angel, though the angel is speaking. The angel, we have to remember, is a messenger of God. He comes and he doesn't give his own words, but he gives the words that the Lord gives him to speak. And so... The message that he has is not just for these women and for the disciples, but it's a message for us today. And so let me just give you uh, some very quick uh, points from, from this sermon today. First of all, he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul writes, and he says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Our enemy loves to use this weapon of fear to destroy your faith. When we're afraid, it's hard to stand still and resist him. But the Bible clearly tells us that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. We have authority over him through the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful that I don't have to stand in my own power or in my own strength, or in my ability to outwit him. I'm so grateful that I don't have to, 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 to rely on my education to do that, but I have the power of God behind me. As these guards were there guarding this tomb, 
which I know seemed to them to be a really ridiculous thing. I mean, how many times do you have to guard a tomb, you know? But here they are, they're guarding this tomb, when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and his appearance was as lightning, and you know that it had to have been a very scary thing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty reasonable guy, but I get spooked a lot of times in the dark as well, and you can just imagine how they felt when suddenly, out of nowhere, there was this great light and this being standing in front of them, shining like lightning. And they were so afraid, they were petrified with fear. But I want you to notice the, the angel's response to these ladies. He said to them, don't be afraid. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. These are all abilities that result in a calm and well-balanced mind and self-control. And God's desire for us today, in the midst of all that's going on around us, is that we have a sound mind, that we have a well-balanced understanding that God is in control of everything. We don't have to be afraid. The enemy wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be fearful for your life. He wants you to be fearful for all the things that are going on. And, and people act crazy when they're afraid. How do I know that? Because there's no toilet paper at Walmart. You can't find toilet paper anywhere because people were so afraid. And I don't know what they thought the toilet paper was going to do for them, but they took it and it's all gone. But I'm so grateful that God's power is better than toilet paper. Amen? I'm so grateful that God knows what he's doing and we can put our trust in him. Hallelujah. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. His desire for us is that we not be afraid. Secondly, the angel says to them, he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. And when you hear this, I want you to understand, this was the most powerful statement that has ever been made in all of history. The most powerful thing that was ever said. Even more powerful than when God first spoke and said, let there be, and the worlds were created. Because this was the plan of God from the very beginning. That we might be redeemed, that we might be bought back, that we might understand he is not dead. He is not here. He is alive. Hallelujah. He has risen from the dead. The Bible says in, in Revelation, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died. But look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. The significance of this is obvious. Jesus told us, I have told you that, uh, that you may have peace in me. Here, in, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. There are going to be a lot of tribulation. There's going to be a lot of problems. There's going to be a lot of things that we have to face. There will be other pandemics, perhaps. There will be other things that we have to go through. But understand this. He says, I have already overcome the world. Hallelujah. But then pair that again with this. He now holds the keys of death and the grave. Not only is he in control of everything that's going on, not only is he in perfect control, but he also has the, the, the control of the outcome. He is holding the keys of death and the grave. Paul again writes in Romans chapter 8, and verse 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Hallelujah. We have this promise of God that death is just but for a moment. A good friend of ours was preaching my mama's funeral. And in that funeral, he said that when Judy closed her eyes, to us it was closed forever, but to her it was a blink. 
Because in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye, she was transferred from this terrible life to that life beyond. Hallelujah. And now she's perfectly in God's care and his loving mercy. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful today that we have a God who has overcome the world and overcome the grave as well. Hallelujah. The third thing that the angel said was come and see. Come and see. The world wants proof. Faith in Christ doesn't come naturally. In fact, going back to Romans chapter 8, verses 9 and 10, we find it says, But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. And even so, your body will die because of sin, but the Spirit gives you life because you've been made right with God. If you don't believe, then you don't get the benefits of all of these promises. I keep hearing people quote scripture verses about how that God works all things together for good, but the, the scripture doesn't start, stop there. It says, to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Today, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, you're not covered yet. But the good news is the reason that Jesus died on that cross and the reason that he gave himself up was to become a sacrifice for us. He died in your place so that you wouldn't have to die. And all you have to do is believe him and trust in him and he will save you. Hallelujah. The Old Testament prophet said, come, let us reason together. And the angel proclaims to us today, come and see. Come and see the tomb is empty. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see if he can give you perfect peace. Come and see if you can too have eternal life with Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive forevermore. Come and see today. Even before I get to the end of my message, I want you to understand that God loves you and he cares for you and he knows what you're going through. You may not understand it, but God knows what he's doing and he knows what's going on in you. And the Bible says that he has worked these things together for our good so that we can put our trust in him. No matter what goes on in our life, the bad things that happen, God has a way of bringing them about for the good of those who love him and call upon his name. Today, if you'll trust in him, if you'll just pray and ask him to forgive you of your sins, if you'll believe that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you too can be saved and your name can be written in the Lamb's book of life forever and ever. And then these promises are all for you as well. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've said. It doesn't matter what, what you've done. God forgives. He gave us his son. He died so that you can come and pray freely and know that he will give you life, and that is eternal life. The fourth thing that the angel said to them was, go quickly and tell. News like this is too exciting too important to keep to yourself. You need to go quickly and tell others who are hurting and who are afraid that Jesus is alive and has already overcome all of this stuff. If you will just believe it and tell it and share it so that others can know that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's alive forevermore. Amen. And then finally, he says, and you will see him there. You will see him there. The disciples were depressed. Their Savior, their Messiah, the one who they believed was going to save them from the Romans and set Israel free, had been crucified and buried. And they saw him die. And they saw him bleed. And they saw him suffer. And now they were so afraid because if their leader was taken, surely they were going to come after those that followed him. 
But this word gave them hope. When they heard that Jesus was alive, the first thing that John and Peter did was take off and run to the grave. They wanted to see for themselves that he was risen. And when they got there, they saw for themselves that he was not there. Jesus told them specifically, go to Galilee and you will see me there. Hallelujah. Friends, today I declare to you that Jesus is alive and he wants you to come to him. He told them, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There are more than enough rooms in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you that you will always be where I am. Hallelujah. God has, has prepared a place for us. If you trust in him, if you believe in his word, and if you've asked him for forgiveness of your sins, the Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm here to tell you today that that is available to you today. And if you do that, he's preparing a place for you. Hallelujah. Paul later on wrote, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 51, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. And then John concludes his revelation in Revelation 22. He says, the words of Christ, surely I am coming quickly. Hallelujah. And he ends it by saying, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I want you to know something, folks. The resurrection of Jesus was not the end of the story. It was the beginning of the story. All the stuff that has happened in between is things where, where we have the opportunity to show the love of Jesus. He has given us over 2,000 years to share the message of Jesus Christ with our world. And right now, I believe the message has gone throughout the world, and I believe with all my heart that Jesus is coming soon. The one who was dead but is alive and will be alive forevermore is coming to transform our lives. Hallelujah. And what he's looking for from you is that you would trust him and that you would believe him and that you could be part of this victorious day, Resurrection Sunday. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord, for those who have heard the message today. I trust, Lord God, that through all my stumbling, Lord God, Lord God, you were able to speak to their hearts. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord God, the message would get to the heart of the matter. Lord, I pray that they would be saved today in Jesus' name. Father God, I put my trust in you and my faith to believe that this word will go out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching today. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, would you just simply pray, Father, I'm a sinner. Please take away my sins. I need your help. I believe that your son Jesus came and he lived and he died for me. And I thank you that he's alive forevermore. I pray, Lord, that you would become my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you'll pray that, the Bible says the angels in heaven are rejoicing at this moment for you. Praise God.
Looks like we'll have to do this again next week. So please uh, feel free to join us again on this Facebook page or on YouTube. And uh, hopefully we'll, you'll be able to find us there. God bless you. It's our prayer.